Biden for a long time. I used to consider him a friend. Do you think he could handle this pressure? I don't think so. I think even a fraction of this pressure and stress and attacks that Trump has endured would cause him to crumble. Now, if you listen to what Nikki Haley has been saying, she claims that she claims that President Trump only cares about himself and that he's doing all that he's doing only for himself. If that were the case, wouldn't he just walk away from all this? Walk away from the headaches and the attacks and the stress that he's enduring right now? So why doesn't he? I've had the chance to meet with him and speak with him at length, and I've seen firsthand his heartfelt interactions with friends of mine, veterans, and I've seen how he has touched their hearts and moved them to tears as he expressed his appreciation for their service and their sacrifice. No cameras, no crowds, just that heartfelt conveyance of appreciation. I've gotten a sense for what motivates him, and it's got nothing to do with what the Washington establishment is accusing him of. This is a man who's a fighter. His strength and resilience. His strength and resilience can only come from one place. His ability to endure this hardship can only come from one place, and that's a sincere love and concern for the future of our country and his care for the American people. But we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us. Now is the time for us to act motivated by our love of country. We've got to take all the outrage and sadness and fear that we may feel caused by those in power who have no care or respect for the will of the people. Take all of those feelings and let that motivate us to take action, to find strength in knowing that they are doing what they're doing because they're afraid of us. That just like we see foreign dictators are afraid of democracy, the Democrat elite are so afraid of a free people and a free society and the possibility that we, the American people, might make the wrong choice in this election by choosing someone other than them. They are doing all they can through the power of law enforcement, the criminal justice system, the national security state, doing all that they can to stop us from exercising our freedom. They forget that we, the people, are the ones with the power. But we have to use that power. We cannot allow them to get away with this. Our democracy is under attack and it's up to us to save it. We have to hold those responsible accountable at the ballot box. We have to send this strong message to leaders in both parties that those who abuse their power and undermine our democracy and our freedom will not be tolerated. If we do nothing, if we turn a blind eye to those who are weaponizing our criminal justice system against their political opponents and telling us who we are and aren't allowed to vote for, telling us what we are and aren't allowed to say or see or hear, it will set a dangerous precedent for every election and presidency in the future. And that democracy as we know it will be finished.